Are you a student, mentor, or parent that loves robotics? Then you're in the right place. Up-to-date info on all things robotics, this is the RoboZone Podcast with your host, Pete Ekman. The RoboZone Podcast is brought to you by Kettering University. It's a Kettering-built world. Hello and welcome to the 69th episode of the RoboZone Podcast. This podcast is for Tuesday, July 31st. In this episode, we talk to Ken from 107 about some upcoming events in the fall that your team can use to introduce new drive team members, new scouting mentors, new mentors, period, or just new people on your team. So we hope you enjoy this interview. The RoboZone Podcast is brought to you by AndyMark.com, your robot parts experts. With me tonight, I have Ken. Ken, please introduce yourself. Well, I'm Ken Platishore. I've been involved with First Robotics uh, for almost, you know, this coming year will be 20 years. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, I've been involved with se- Team 74 and now I'm with uh, Team 107. So tell people what Team 74 is, if they don't know. Team 74 is Team Chaos. That's uh, a team that's been around, it was formed in 1995, or the rookie year was 1995, uh, formed uh, by some mentors that worked at Hayworth. And Hayworth was the founding sponsor and still is their founding sponsor for their uh, that team. And you're, you said you're at 107 now, correct? Yes, I left uh, Team 74 as a, I was a lead mentor there. And uh, uh, since 2005, I've been doing robot inspections. And uh, I've been progressively getting more involved in inspections. And I'm also involved as a uh, board member on the with First in Michigan as well. So I need to op- needed to open up some time uh, so that I can function or focus on some of those other uh, main events that, uh, that I would not be able to focus so much on the team. So letting someone else take the reins, uh, I felt was time for that. Everyone reaches their max, as I say, and they need to recharge. And now you're with a new team, so it sounds like you've recharged batteries a little bit. A little bit, yes. I, uh, I'm mentoring on Team 107. Uh, been known, been working and collaborating with that team for 10 years already. Uh, it's a great group of people, and uh, feel like family there. And uh, we get, we we also work together on uh, providing. Uh, what do I want to say? Um, a lot of volunteers for the events. Uh, we they help out with uh, hauling all the mace night that we need for the West Michigan event. Uh, both for the WMRI as well as West Michigan in March. And uh, they also help with some storage as well. Cool. And, and we're going to get to w, uh, WHMI. No, I'm thinking that's <laughs> that's actually a radio station where I live. <laughs> right. Um, but w- we'll get, yeah, WMRI. <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, tell us 107 did this past season with Power Up. They did pretty good. Uh, looking at uh, some of the stats, um, uh, they were, oh, let's see, uh, let me pull up the information here. They did uh, make it to the quarterfinals at Waterford. Okay. And uh, we had a really, uh, you know, I had to kind of shake out the cobwebs like any team has to do at their first event. Uh, then participated at the West Michigan event and made it through into the uh, semifinals. Uh, went to a rubber match there. And then uh, participated in uh, Forest Hills event and uh, made it to quarterfinals, but uh, didn't go proceed uh, beyond that. Um, we did not qualify only by a few points for state, but uh, that's okay. Yep, it's it's a, another season. One one good thing about robotics is, and this is coming from a rookie mentor, right? I was just a rookie mentor last season. Is mm-hmm. that yeah? Every year presents a new chance to excel and learn from previous seasons, and then uh, fix what you need to fix, right? Right. And we had uh, the other challenge was uh, developing a new drive team, so that uh, you know we had our other drive team graduate, so that was always a factor. But it sounds like you guys were competitive. You guys made the playoffs in each one of the events you went, so that's not that shows that you guys were competitive. Absolutely. Now, there's there's 508 teams here in Michigan, and only 160 make the state championship championships and uh, I as a rookie team had a little bit extra points that's one of the kickers we get as a rookie team so without those points we wouldn't have got to where we did so but 
I, I wish you all the luck in the next season. I'm sure you guys are going to skyrocket. Hopefully we see you guys. I'd like to be at an event that you guys are at so that we can compete with each other. Not against each oh. other, just with each other, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, before we get to the event, too, you brought up a little bit about how you got into the inspections of robots, right? Tell us a little bit about that because that I think that's something that everyone uh, wants to understand Usually it's just the drive team that goes through that inspection or whoever the mechanical lead or something is on a team. But tell us a little bit more about inspections and how important those those are. Well, the inspections, we want to help the teams. Uh, we want them to compete. We're not going to let it. I'm not going to let anybody not compete and I'm not going to let them miss a match either. So I'll do whatever I can to help that team uh, get there. But with inspections, I've been doing inspections since 2005 when uh, we were still regionals. And uh, it's, I, I've seen how the whole design of the robot or the technology has changed. And it's, uh, you know, a challenge trying to keep up with everything, but, it, you know, you can do it. Um, when we get to an event, what we want the teams to do is show, uh, at least send one person over to the inspection desk. Uh, well, with, uh, I correct that. We need to have two students at least bring the robot over to put it on the scale and then we do a size and weight uh where you do a size and weight at that point that puts the team into the queue um and then we send them back to their pits if there's anything that we see right there that needs to be corrected before we send an inspector to their pit then we would ask them to correct that right then and it will save some time but uh, we at that point we will send uh inspector that they're in the queue at that point because uh, at a certain point it'll get really busy and it's first in first out and uh we will send an inspector over and get them inspected and make sure they get on the field and is there any pieces of advice you can give teams say i like to cover things that rookies need to know and even sophomore teams like such as myself uh going into our sophomore season I think every team needs to educate those, themselves a little bit more about inspections because it just helps the um, the fluidness of an event, if that makes sense. Especially those first that first night or the, the the morning of the competition starting. So, what are some pieces of advice that you could give a rookie team? Um, just make sure you have your paperwork ready, your um, bill of material, and uh, that's what we need to see. Uh, I will <clears throat> excuse me. I will only. We will always really speak to the students. We don't really, nothing against the mentors, but we, this is a learning experience for the students. And we would like to talk to the students and see what their knowledge is of the robot. Um, make sure, like I said, you have your paperwork and, and your, yeah, the bill material does not have to be a hard copy. It can be something on your laptop. One thing we've run across, and this is a one thing that I would like rookies or any team really to know, Upload your bill of material to like a Google Drive or a cloud-based program that you can access it. I've had it several times, even at the state championship or even the world championship, where teams forgot or someone else had the bill of material. And if they had it out on a cloud-based storage, uh, they can access it at any time. And that's what we're, you know, that will save you a lot of time or headaches actually because we cannot complete the inspection unless we see that bill of material or right, the, the, or the call a, as they call it now right that's a really good piece of advice kid i never thought about doing that we have so many there's so many teams that have now tablets i mean everyone with electronic scouting everyone's got some type of device where you can load that and hopefully you have internet access i know there are some events that there's no internet access at all like if you're if you're at kettering mm -hmm. university and you're competing very rarely can you get on the internet everyone's jumping onto the free wi-fi that's in there so hopefully Hopefully you always have a piece that, or have it downloaded to that whatever that device you're using. At least the right. mentor. Right. It's too many times where it's on the mentor's laptop or on a school laptop and that person's not there. And I'd hate to see someone, I don't want to see anybody miss a match. And, you know, sometimes I will check, see what the circumstances are. If that's the only thing that they have to have and... You know, I've had someone even take a pic, have them call someone at the school and take a picture of it so that I could see it on the phone. 
that's acceptable. I got that. Uh, it, it's always nice to have that and for kids to understand what that build of materials is because we're all held accountable for putting a certain amount of money into our robot. So thanks for the pieces of advice on that. Um, I'm One other thing that I, comes to my mind is you could also have your roster in an electronic format too because I know most events have a printer available where you, if you forgot your uh, roster, you could print it out right there and then you have it too. So maybe the, the head mentor, the mentor that's in charge of that has it all on a thumb drive or something of that nature. Just little right. little, little pieces of advice. And one other little piece of advice is um, put your, oh, let's say your uh, lockout tag out sheet. Don't put it inside the bag when you send it to an event because we have to, <laughs> we're, uh, we've had that happen a few times as well. So if you can put it in your toolbox and make sure that uh, it's there. That's another thing that uh, we've run into where people have forgotten their lockout tag out form. That's probably the most important form that you have because it's very hard to replace. It, yeah, it is. But thanks for the piece of advice on that, Ken. So let's talk a little bit about this fall event you have coming on. Um, tell us a little bit of, about it. Well, WMRI is an event that's been uh, we've been hosting for a while. It's going to be, we had a little challenge this year because normally we have it at the last weekend in October. And um, one of the other events on the other side of the state uh, happened to snag that date from us. No problem. I mean, I, it's not a big deal. Uh, so we had to move it up one week. And because of that, we had to move to a different school. So we're still in Zealand. Zealand has two high schools. They have a Zealand East and a Zealand, a Zealand West. And uh, normally we were at the West, but this year we're going to be at Zealand East High School, which is right next door to the other high school. And that's going to be on October 20th. And uh, there's right now a registration that's open to teams. If they go to WMRI.info, uh, they can register for the event. It's uh, registration right now is $200 for teams if they register by the end of August. After that, it's $250 if you do by September 1st. Um, doors open at 7 o'clock and run through the day, and uh, usually we're done by 5. Is this a full-blown off-season event, 40 teams and such? Uh, no, we've hit, well, last year we had 32 teams. Um, you know, we're trying to get as much match play in for teams as possible. Um, every year for the last five years, I know that we've we've had a team come all the way down from Toronto in that area. They've always come down to compete there as well. Um, but it's a fun time. It is a full-blown event. Uh, well, like I said, not 40 teams, but uh, we try to run around 30, 32. You know, just to, uh, you know, want to see what the match play is going to be. That Canada team isn't 2056, is it? I don't recall which, what, which one it was <laughs> last year. But I know that they said they uh, are located north of Toronto. And, uh, yeah, it's quite a haul for them to come in. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm sure everyone looks forward to these off-season events because – and, and you brought up a good a, a good uh, possibility or a reference earlier when you said you had to train a new drive team. This is one of those events where you can start training that team, and it's yeah, not, any, not full blown. Yeah, any off season team is a perfect opportunity to train new uh, students. You know, for driving the robot for next year. It's also an opportunity to bring other students that could possibly or that might be interested in wanting to join the team, or you know, a team or your team. And uh, it's a perfect time to do that. And uh, we always take an opportunity to invite our sponsors there too, just to see what the event's about. And you told me prior to this, this isn't the only event that you know about coming up. What are some of the other events that you wanted to uh, reference? Well, on um, September 29, uh, there is the Lakeshore Robocon. It's going to be at the Lake Small in Muskegon. It's hosted by uh, 2405 and 4004. And uh, it's open to teams uh, who want to come in and just kind of showcase the robot. Uh, we will have uh, a full si uh, full blown regulation switch there for them to play with and dump the cubes in. Um, I think there's going to be some FTC robots there as well uh, for just to show. And uh, it, I've been there before, and it's uh, it is a good time because uh, a lot of kids are walking in the mall with their parents, and uh, they look around and say, oh, robot, cool, you know. So that's one event that's coming up. October 12th in Wyoming at the Wyoming High School, uh, there's going to be the all-girls event. So there is a all-girls down over in Bloomfield, but there's also one here in 
uh, Wyoming on the west side of the state. And uh, that's always a good turnout as well. And we'll get all the show. We'll put the links to all these events in the show notes uh, so that everyone can go register their teams. There can never be too many women in first because my daughter went through the program and is now a college student studying uh, aer- aeronautical engineering at the University of Michigan. So I'm always a proponent of getting more girls involved in the FRC ranks. It's it's hard to, but once you get that door open, uh, they come flooding into teams, and that's that's great to have that everyone, and that's great that they can have their own little uh, competitions where they can compete. And one other event that we got uh, it's in the planning stages right now. Uh, it's uh, we're trying we're putting together a rookie mentor camp, and that's going to be October 27, and that's going to be at the Byron Center High School down here just south of Grand Rapids. Uh, we're trying to we're getting our presenters together right now, and information will be coming out on that as it becomes available. And you know what, Ken? If you need another person to help out with that, I think I can come help. I mean, I was just a rookie mentor, so it's so fresh in my mind the lessons that I learned to make sure I don't repeat them in my second year. Uh, one of those is uh, first choice from. <laughs> From parts which I missed the deadline on that so I didn't even get those parts but mm-hmm. um, you know rookie mentors need as much help and even sophomore mentors need as much help as possible so yes um, if yes. you need help let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to come down there and help okay yeah we've already got a couple of presenters uh, we're focusing a lot on uh, programming so we do have uh, LabVIEW and uh, I believe Java covered and we're looking for C++ and um, I think I'm, I'm still waiting to hear back uh, from someone who knows about Python because that seems to be uh, new up and coming with some teams. Uh, but then we're going to, you know, some of the information like what you are talking about would be uh, good to have at that event as well. Well, I'm, I'm glad and I'm, I can't wait to hear more. I know you're still in the planning stages, but I can't wait to hear more. So make sure that uh, as that, that information presents itself to send it to me and I'll send it out on the podcast and update everyone on that on that piece. I will. So Ken, thank you for all the information about the, the upcoming events for the fall. Uh, before we know it, I think we're a little under how many more months we got to go? Six? Not even that before we're going to be getting to kick off and getting going again. It seems like yesterday it was done. Um, did you, I want to pick your brain a little bit about Power Up. Did you enjoy the game? Yeah, I thought it was an enjoyable game. It's uh, like what I've noticed with the past few years. It's fun to watch how the game evolves from week one through week well, week eight, you know, when you get to the world championship. Strategies all change. Um, I like these themed games. Um, it, it was exciting, and uh, I'm looking forward to what next year is going to be. How about the time gating? Did you enjoy that aspect where, you know, it was points per second that you could score? Did you like that kind of format? Yeah, I did. I did like that. It I, uh, it really put the pressure on the teams, actually, you know, to make sure that you could control that one side of that uh, switch or the scale. Right. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I've heard I've heard mixed uh, feelings about it. Some mentors thought that you could get too far behind and could never come back. And there's people that, you know, if you pull ahead, you can pull ahead, and it's everyone's going to try to catch you. So I think it's either if you're on the losing end or the winning end of that of that yeah. round, whether you like it or dislike it, or, or it's different. And I think as first evolves, our games are going to be a little more complex. Uh, one of my favorite games. Uh, to this day was Stronghold. I love the medieval theme, trying to to get over those obstacles, especially some wouldn't even touch some of the obstacles, like the port, the corda, what was that thing? It was it the drawbridge was one? What portacollis? Everyone would did, one, did not want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was it was interesting, but I remember those those robots had to be built like tanks because you literally are flying over things. So, well, I, and the fun thing about these games too is that uh, it gets the rest of the team involved because uh, you see teams coming up with more costumes or even work on promotional materials to try to give out to you know the general public or trading with other people. But it's just it does get the whole team together and not just the drive team and the robot. So let's let's expand this a little bit more, Ken. What do you think uh, Deep Space is going to be? You have any ideas? I can only go with speculation, but uh, I do know that uh, there's a couple space anniversaries going on next year, and uh, you, 
So I don't know how they're going to tie that all in together. Um, and uh, there's, you know, how the NASA has been talking about doing that lunar base, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I'm kind of wondering if the old little mini bot's going to come back or not. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, that's been mentioned once or twice, and lunacy uh, has has made its presence known, and everyone uh, does not want to see a second version of that, which means maybe we will see that. <laughs> you, you never know what's going to happen. Um, one of the things I'm thinking about for future episodes is to cover different types of drivetrains. One of the things that people have brought up and, and we're all, you know, conspiracy theory at this point is uh, a different type of surface where you'd have to maneuver over like a lunar surface, which is not smooth. It's it's cratered. So trying to think of what kind of drivetrains might work in that, you know, capacity. Right. Well, do you have a suggestion if we had to th- if we had to have a crater and we had to drive through the crater and over the top? What kind of drivetrain would you pick for that for your team? Um, if you were to go, if it's something like um, Stronghold, you know, obviously uh, you're going to go with a you know tank drive. Uh, this game and last year worked out great with having uh, Swerve Drive if you could do it. Um, speed was uh, a critical thing and uh, trying to outmaneuver your other opponent you know was a big thing um, I don't see him making it too rough you know too rough because uh, the big issue is assembly of the field and we you know they don't want to spend too much time putting the field together I mean when you had the uh, game from last year not power up but uh, 2017 game that Steamworks. Yeah, Steamworks, that's right. It's kind of a blur nowadays. You know? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> but um, it took a long time for us to put that field together, and uh, we were pushing the time limits of uh, getting the events going. So uh, I think FIRST has seen that, and they're going to try to keep it simple. It might be some obstacles that go around. You know, you might be play, you know, placing some obstacles on or, you know, game pieces on top of an obstacle in the middle field. I don't know what's going to be, but, uh, you know, we can always speculate, and that's what I think uh, gets first going. <laughs> I think yeah. they like, love watching this because it's like uh, dangling the carrot out there in front of everybody. Yeah, I know they love it, and they love to give little hints too. Um, I One thing that I've joked about on past episodes is the um, in Steamworks we had that uh, airship, right? You could very easily mock that up to be a, a lunar lander. All you have to yeah. do is put some more apparatuses on it, right? Yeah. And and uh, do you think that they'll have another person? And I mean, that was the only year that we've had an actual additional team member on the field. Do you think they're going to go back to that? Do you think they learned their lesson in it? No, I think there. I don't think there was any lesson to learn, but I think they uh, it opened up the possibilities for future games, definitely. Felt sorry for those for those people up in that airship, though. There was a lot of people shouting a lot of things at those people. Poor, yeah, but poor. they had the best view of the whole game. Oh yes, oh yes, and there's <laughs> there's plenty of footage out there. The, the I think it was the Killer Bees, that young lady that was sitting up there, had a GoPro on, had some of the best footage I've seen yet from that perspective. I know that we're due. I think we're due for a shooting game as well. Um, maybe shooting different size objects maybe i have no idea it's all conspiracy theory at this point i wish they'd just give us a little hint yeah you know maybe we're shooting something that uh, is supposed to be like an asteroid or something i don't know right uh one of the things that a uh, young man uh, came on from 226 has said maybe we're going to shoot a football and i have always said and i'll echo this again i hope it's not that because i don't want to try to build that type of apparatus but you know it's a challenge well, so it's going to be in the shape of what's in the first symbol, square, triangle, or circle. Oh, yes. Or it could be if it you be broke down, you broke down, or multiple, or you could break down the uh, the the graphic that we have for deep space. Which, if you look at it, the ship that's on it that's blasting off is in different pieces. So maybe it's one of those pieces. Who knows? That's why I'm speculating on a mini bot. Oh, <laughs> something that breaks off. Maybe it's too many bots. Maybe they're going to one up that. Uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> or maybe drones that shoot off the side of your robot. I don't think we'd ever have an air game. Everyone wants a water game. That's the ongoing joke, I know. Yeah. Um, but who knows? But 
I'm glad you came on the podcast tonight, Ken. You've given us, given us uh, info on your teams, uh, the events that you got coming up. I greatly appreciate the info on front as an inspector because I think that's something that's lost until we get to an event and then we have to try to fix the things that inspectors find, but mm -hmm. they're just going by the rules and people really need to make sure they remember that. Yeah, we just have to remember just don't lawyerize the rules as we call them. Um, you can overanalyze them. We're here to help, and if they have any questions, you know, contact one of us and we'll make sure that you know we'll even come out to your site before the bag day and come out and do a pre-inspection for you we're and that's uh, great we're starting to do that now and uh there's some multiple events being planned for next year we piloted it last year and uh we're going to do that again and i i'm i i will find an event to make sure we get screened prior to going to our first event but here's a little piece of advice to any person that's going to be a rookie mentor this year don't wait till week four to to do your first event i learned that last year and i had four and six and uh, i was trying to figure out how i was going to pay for state championships so you know that, that's that live and learn there's one there's one little thing you could tell the rookie mentors when you have your camp ken yeah that's one thing we will tell them Try to get try to get into week week one or two so you can iron some things out, or you're too 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 far behind the ball. Right, right. Well, again, thanks Ken for coming on board. Uh, again, as you sign out, please give us your full name, uh, the team that you're with, and if you know any links to social media. Well, this is Ken Platishore, and with Team 107 Team Robotics out of Holland, Michigan. And thanks for stopping by, Ken. You're welcome. Thanks. The RoboZone Podcast is brought to you by AndyMark.com, your robot parts experts. Again, I'd like to thank Ken for stopping by, telling us about the upcoming events here in the fall in the great state of Michigan on the West Coast. If you have an event, no matter where you are, please let us know. We'd like to interview you, have you come on the podcast, give you some free promotion of your event and eventually hopefully we can fill them up as quickly as possible you have finished listening to the 69th episode of the robozone podcast you can listen to us on itunes podcast soundcloud and google music thank you for listening to the podcast we will see you next week the robozone podcast is brought to you by kettering university it's a kettering built world <laughs> Thanks for listening to the RoboZone podcast with your host, Pete Ekman. Find us online at RoboZoneTV.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram.